guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. If I look tired today, it's because I am. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, last night, we went to bed like at midnight oh, or sure, so. Oh, sure, because last night. Yeah, and then I got up at three with Samantha Grace, and then uh, I got you up at five because she got up, and then I could see you in, <laughs> in the nursery, like kind of rocking her, but with your eyes shut, and you looked so tired. And so, and I wasn't feeling like super tired at the moment, so I decided, well, I'll do them a solid and I'll go get Samantha and take her downstairs. Anyway, I'm like, I'm struggling today. And it's like uh, the first really hot day of the year. Yeah, can we turn the fan on in here? Yeah, it's clean. So it's not gonna oh. like, I know. How do you not, turn it on? Uh, I think you pull the thing. The, the thing. Hold on. Oh, that was the light. Oh. Yeah, just like a week ago, if you would have turned that on, like dust would have just blown everywhere. Is that gonna be too loud? Is that too loud? Uh, it is going kind of hard. Oh, it's kind of nice. Is it? Yeah, as long as it's not bad for you guys. Like my mic's here. It's kind of under my shirt. I think it'll be all right. Oh, be fine. there's a little dust, a little dust. Anyway, let's get right into the videos from this past week. The first one was planting 288 dahlias and 75 glads. Um, so that's what I did in that video. I just went through, I mean, it, I, Sometimes I feel like it's a little bit redundant because I did the same exact thing last year, but there were new varieties. And then um, the top comment was from Rissa. Uh, Ken, uh, it was when I said, Ken, our editor is probably cursing my name about now. Because <laughs> at the end I thought, you know what? This video has been all brown. Like everything's brown out there. Sure. It's like a dusty Mars. brownness and it's not very pretty right now. So I thought, well, it would be really pretty to end this video with pictures of the dahlias that I just planted. But I knew Ken was probably like, and he actually told Aaron that he was editing that video and he thought, yes, I'm getting to the end of this one. You know, I've almost got it buttoned up. And then he heard me say that yeah. and he was like, oh, but he's always really great about it. And that did take a lot of extra effort. So um, the rest of that comment was, we appreciate the effort, Ken. The photos are awesome. Thank you. Yes, Ken, thank you very much for that because it did make the video um, a heck of a lot prettier. Uh, Brittany Sue said, dang girl. Do your knees and back ever get sore? Yes. <laughs> Love your house and gardens. I can't wait to see them all come up. Will they be up this summer or fall? The dahlias, yes, will be up this, well, they should be up here in the next, I would guess like week or 10 days or so, we'll start seeing some growth. Um, it takes them a little while to get going. I remember last year, I thought for sure they had all like rotted in their holes because it took long enough to where I was like, I got to it too late. They were all dried out and I just had to be patient. So this year I'm not as stressed about it because I know that they'll come. We'll have a lot longer growing season this year. Well, by about a month. Yeah. I mean, the dahlias are in a month earlier. But I was just thinking this morning, because I, I still haven't even planted a lot of my flower seeds out there, like uh, sunflowers and zinnias and things like that. Um, I'm still ahead if I get them planted now with the first part of June. I'm still ahead of last year. Mm -hmm. But it's been so windy, like abnormally windy this spring, that I've kept pushing like all the planting. And every time I plant something, like the snapdragons, I planted those last week or something like that. Anyway, and then we proceeded to have like the most windy couple of days. And that happened with the sweet peas too. And it like, sets everything back and makes them look horrible for weeks while they try to recover from that. Um, so anyway, I mean, we'll just see what happens. I don't know, that had nothing to do with that. But yes, my knees and back do get sore sometimes. Um, my knees more this year than previous years. Uh, Grace Emma said, which is funny, my niece's name is Emma Grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you keep mul your mulch from blowing everywhere? It's windy in eastern Montana where we live and our mulch just goes all over our lawn every year. It's such a mess. How does our mulch not blow away? I don't know. It, it must be sense. heavy enough that it doesn't get picked up. Yeah, it just stays put and out there, like out in the wind tunnel, it just it stays where we put it. Which is nice. Yeah. The fact that it doesn't get picked up because uh -huh. that would be... Oh, it'd be a waste of money. It'd be a total waste of money. And, and time and effort and all of that kind of business. Uh, Robin said, can we get a link on the tall standing auger you used for the glads, please? Sure. We'll put it in the description below. Kiki Nums 95 said, who is this mysterious Paul? So Paul is our full-time help outside. We have one full-timer out there and it is Paul. He's been with us for a year now, over a year, or just at a year. Well, so, okay, so Paul came about because um, he's the brother of a friend. Mm -hmm. We were putting up that uh, cattle panel the fence, fence around the, around the flower, garden. flower garden last mm -hmm. year. And you and I started to work on it and then we started to realize like. how much time it was gonna take to actually install it. And we mm -hmm. thought like, 
we won't be able to film videos for like two or three days if you yeah. and I do this. Right. Um, of course, he whipped it out in like no time flat. I know. That's the thing with Paul. But he was originally just going to start and just help with that one project. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And then he was going to go find a job somewhere. And we just kept having things for him to do. Yeah. We just kept saying like, if you want to keep working, like we'll keep you busy. And so he's stayed around, thankfully. So thankful. Um, he gets a ton done and he's got a really good mind for things out there like common sense he can fix stuff mm -hmm. i mean just super super lucky super lucky he's got the um like the farm kid mentality yeah you know like you can yeah. tell he had to figure things out yeah there's people who mm -hmm. grew up in the country and mm -hmm. people who grew up in the city and i they have I'm, different strengths yeah i I'm, like you and i go to a city oh my word you should see Aaron and I in a city. Well, but the problem is I feel like I'm kind of the worst of both because you, you, you know what not. I mean? Like, I don't feel like I have the common sense. Like, I wish I had the common sense of some of the farm kids that I see because they just like, they just get in there and fix anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, they, they know how to do I stuff. But I feel like I also don't have the street smarts of the city kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're somewhere in the in I'm between. I'm somewhere like in the middle the and I didn't, I didn't get, you know, a good part of either one. D Helms 58 said, when you need to increase the water for something, do you increase the time or the frequency? It actually depends. Um, right now, when it's starting to get really hot, like it's supposed to be 100 plus this week, like 102, 104, right around in there, a couple of the days. And then two days later, it's the high as like 72. Yeah. So you know what that means. We're going to have like gale force winds for the second part of this week. It really depends on the crop <sighs> because sometimes earlier in the spring, we will water things every other day. Mm -hmm. And then we increase the frequency by watering it every day when it starts to get hot. Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes with annuals in pots, I'll have things get watered twice a day. If I know it's only annuals in that area mm -hmm. and they're in pots, sometimes I'll do twice. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but most of the time I want to say we'll go, some will be watered like 20 minutes and we'll switch it to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Or it'll be at 30 minutes and we'll bump it to 45. Like existing flower beds, like the kitchen flower bed, for example, the area where we've got those incredible hydrangeas. I don't know if we're going to have to try something different in that area or what the deal is, but we've had to monkey with the water over there because those plants just wilt. Yeah. Um, but not everybody, everything in the flower bed does. Yeah. Everybody wants to know how long to run things, but you really just have to run it. Yeah. And, and then just, just try things out. Check it, check it the next, you know, run it for 20 minutes to start or 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. And Are see, things wilted? Then yeah, give them more. If it looks know? wilted or if, if, I mean, you just got water everywhere. Well, you probably ran it for too long. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no science yeah. to it. Laura said, where do you purchase your emitter hose? I would love to find it uh, on large rolls. Uh, dr drip depot drip depot.com dot com. get the drip tape that has the emitter holes every six inches even if it's something that you have to space 12 inches like the dahlia is it just doesn't work as good as well as good well as well, as well. Uh, yeah six inches is better you can just run it for less amount of time but I feel like it's it spreads out better too mm -hmm. like it just because that drip tape is a little squirrely too so if it gets kind of like yeah, Weird. if you think that you're going to put the drip tape down and then put uh, seeds at where the drip holes are, the drip tape will shrink yeah. and expand yeah. based on the weather. And so those holes will never be where you think they should be. And that's why I feel like the six inch just covers the whole area. Mm -hmm. So it does a really good job. Uh, Peggy said, do you have any bug issues with dahlias? I remember earwigs. And I hear that that's a huge problem with um, dahlias. I didn't have that problem last year. Um, it could be because I was planting in a raw piece of ground that hadn't been planted on for a very, very long time. Um, and that tends to, like, you can usually get a year or two out of a space like that before bugs find it. Um, so it might be something I deal with in the future. Uh, you know, in that case, I would probably start using some bait. Um, there is some earwig bait. I can't remember what it's called. You probably flash it on the screen. It's a sprinkle. Bug and slug killer? Yeah, maybe that's what it's called. Does that one have earwigs on the label? I don't know. I usually bait for earwigs. I don't spray. So, yeah. Uh, next video is planting peppers and growing tips plus climbing rose update. So in that video, I planted most of my peppers. I have 26 out there and I will plant hot and heavies when I get my hands on them or mine get a little bit bigger. I'm kind of waiting. I know I've got some at the growing facility still, but they were small the last time mm -hmm. a batch came, of plants came over. Um, so it, like, it depends on who's is bigger, <laughs> whose plants are bigger when the, those arrive. Um, so I'll get those planted out and then with my extras, I'll just give them away. But I went over 
some tips on how to like make sure your peppers are thick walled or you know do everything that you can to make sure you have thick walled really tasty peppers with a nice yield um, and then I stopped along the way and showed you the Zephyrin climbing roses on the chicken coop run and the Colette roses um, yeah it was kind of like a little bit all over the place but first comment was from for the love of Pete hey Laura it's great to be ready to have those peppers staked yes I'm so proud of myself so every one of those peppers I have a steak next to it with a little tie even though it's not like tying the pepper up yet because I'm waiting for the peppers to be big enough to steak um, but I'm ready when they are uh, the rest of the comment says but have you staked the delphiniums and Miss Canthus Cabaret have you no are you serious <laughs> oh, not yet I did notice one of my delphiniums is kind of leaning over I need to get on that like right away I just like it's the last thing on my brain and I don't like to do it so I just kind of tend to like not do it yeah uh, Joanna said how do you keep rabbits from eating pepper plants do rabbits like pepper plants I think I most think things don't do. like it I don't think they eat pepper plants but you don't know that for sure. No, I don't. But Joanna I know may that have a rabbit problem. I know that a lot of people plant peppers on purpose to deter other. Pl uh, but maybe not animals. rabbits, because some some animals don't have that hot sensitivity, right? Do birds, right? Do birds not have that? I don't know. I can't. I don't know. Um, if you have a problem with rabbits eating your pepper plants, I would put a wire cloche around them. I don't know. I don't have rabbits. Tamara said, everything looks amazing and such growth. I live in your area and I have followed exactly as you instructed. I think uh, maybe it's my watering. I worry uh, to do too much. How often are you watering and for how long? Uh, so the pepper plants right now, they're getting water every day because they're just in the process of getting themselves established and it's very hot. Uh, and then once they're established, we usually back off to every other day to every third day, depending on what the weather is like. And when, when we water, I think that zone's going for like 20 minutes right now. The pepper zone, the sweet pea zone, is it 20 or 30 minutes right now? It goes 20 minutes every day. Yeah, 20 minutes every day right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Lisa DeKramer said, how often and how long do you run the drip tape? You grabbed a lot of irrigation <laughs> questions today. Uh, uh, apparently I did. <laughs> so 20 minutes once a day, but for all four quadrants? Yeah, I think they're all... I mean, unless we've looked at one and decided to up it a little bit, but I, that's where we, the that's where it is last I knew. The pumpkins need to be running twice a day though. Oh, no, I don't have them going twice a day. So that one we need to bump up to twice a day because okay. it's seeds and it's all 20 seeds. 20 minutes twice a day or like 10 minutes twice a day? Oh, let's see. Probably 10 minutes twice a day is okay. probably sufficient. Um, and then the raspberry beds, I want them to be watered twice a day right now. Okay. Um, so I did end up planting up the second raspberry bed, not with 100% raspberries, but um, anyway, that that one I had to use a different raised bed mix that is like not great, not happy with it at all. And um, it's not retaining moisture at all. So I need it to water twice a day. But when we were out there, so I talked about maybe using our extra lumber, we bought enough lumber to um, build three raised beds. And so we thought about doing a strawberry bed next to him. But I think what we're gonna do is have an identical third bed uh, made just in parallel with the other two. And we're gonna plant my blackberries in there. And I don't think it's gonna take very many blackberry plants to fill up those beds, but I already have four blackberries that are about ready to bloom right now in pots, like big pots mm. by the high tunnels. Um, so I text Eddie and I was like, please don't hate me. <laughs> but can you build a third can you one? one more? Yeah, can you build one more that looks like that? And then right behind them, so perpendicular to them, the, all those beds run parallel to each other. And then on this side, the windy side, we're gonna do a grape structure. So it'll be like a grape wall and then our berry beds. I think it'll be awesome. I don't think I'll be able to plant grapes this year because I won't be able to get my hands on any. The garden center's been out for like a month, but I'm very excited about it. And then we'll figure out somewhere else for strawberries. Um, Gatiz said, how many hours of sun do climbing rose in gen roses in general need? The more the better. Yes, the more the better. They are full sun lovers, so six to eight plus hours. Six hours at the minimum. Kathy said, where do you get the wire foam ties? I don't plant a garden yet and I probably would, ne would never do peppers, but I sure enjoy watching anything you do. That's really sweet. Um, the wire foam ties I picked up at my parents' garden center. I can't remember what brand, but we will find them and get some information in the description below. Rhonda said, seeing your leak reminds me of why I'm scared to try drip. Does that kind of thing happen often? Any ways to mitigate? Yes. Um, so nervous that that might occur and go and check for a significant time resulting in a large water bill, which I totally feel yet. Um, and that kind of thing does happen on occasion. Um, right there, it's just that, that poor area has gone through a little bit of stress in terms of having things pulled out, 
having like random connections being made with the drip tubing. Um, in areas with high, like high pressure last year, we had this problem in our pumpkin patch area, wherever there was a connection uh, between two pieces of the black poly, especially when it got warm and it, the tubing got a little bit more flexible. And then when a bunch of water came through, it would just pop the tubing off and we just have water spraying everywhere. You can get little uh, metal clamps. Is that what they're called? Just yeah, it's like crimp, crimps, crimps, crimps. crimps. They're, yeah. they're just like little metal circles that you put on your, so you've got your piece of drip tube, you put the um, wire clamp thing over the piece of drip tube and then your connector in. And then there's a tool that you can um, clamp that thing down. We could probably- yeah, Crimper. Yeah, a crimper. <laughs> we'll put the picture of all this stuff on the screen and I, I have showed it before, but that helps hold everything to your couplers to where the pressure won't make that happen. I did not do that in this case because we we're going to be retooling pretty much that whole area and I didn't really want to take the extra time. So we're here enough, like we don't go anywhere, that that was probably going for maybe 10 minutes, po like possibly 10 minutes max before I noticed it was going on. Next video was planting full shade window boxes and in that video it was kind of a chilly day and it was uh, sputtering rain on and off throughout the day so I wanted to do something undercover and I knew I wanted to replant the kitchen window box and that's really the only window box I intended on on tackling that day and I ended up doing all of them along that side of the house. In fact, I didn't even plan on planting up most of the window boxes at all. We were gonna take them off the house um, except for the balcony ones and the kitchen one. So uh, they would be off the house when the house was painted, but we pushed that project out. Anyway, um, it, I think it ended up very pretty. My favorite one though out of that whole bunch was the one It's kind of like by our breakfast table little eating area. It's got I Spy Hookerellas and uh, Double Up Pink Begonias. It's very simple, but it looks full and striking and very bright. Don't you think it looks bright, Erin? Like I usually err on like dark colored hookerellas, but they get yeah. lost. Like get sucked in underneath that overhang in the shade. Right. So using that chartreuse has really been nice. Um, Myra said, uh, I will take this opportunity to let you know that I am using your channel in English lessons to uh, landscaping for landscaping adult students. I choose specific section, sections for their listening comprehension assignments and learning vocabulary. The visuals are great and grateful for all the details you include. <sighs> that is so cool. That is so cool. I wish I, had, I knew a second language. Yeah. I've tried. A couple times. Yeah, you tried Spanish. I did. I took. Well, you tried uh, Japanese too, right? I took Japanese for yeah. three years in high school, and then um, I took Spanish at the like community Spanish classes at the college with yeah. my parents. Yeah. Yeah, we were trying to learn Spanish better because we have a lot of Spanish speaking customers coming in at the garden center, and I wanted to be able to communicate. Um, anyway, we played a lot of loteria, <laughs> and <laughs> I won candies and things like that. It wasn't a very, it wasn't a very great class. It was like a uh, it wasn't like affiliated with the college. It was oh. like, um, I don't even know, like kind of like Parks and Rec kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like the, the recreation. Like people coming? Yeah, I don't know. No anyway, uh, the gardening zebra said, my front porch is full shade. This gave me a lot of good ideas. Are there any white flowering plants that do well in full shade containers? Yes, there are impatiens and begonias, both, that will do really well in shade that give you the white blooms. A terenia is also one. Uh, is there an all white terenia? I think there is. Uh, the wishbone flower, they're pretty good in shade. Kayla said, you often say hookera and hookerella. Is there a difference between the two? Yes. So there's hookera, which is your coral bells. There is a tiarella, which is your foam flower, I think. And then there's hookerella, which is a mix between your hookera and your tiarella. So it's kind of combining the best of both of them. So it's combining the colors and, and toughness, I think, of hookera um, and then the shade loving qualities of the Tiarella because it's hard to get uh, shade loving plants with like really vibrant colors. I think that was the deal. Anyway, it's been a while since I've even thought about that. Well, we have that video. Yeah. So if in the video I explained it differently, the video is correct <laughs> and I'm not correct in my explanation today. Uh, Audrey said, just curious when you do the race bed or pff, when you do the raised wrap around porch, will the exterior height of the windows bother you? I absolutely love those window boxes and I'm glad you decided to plant them up again. So here's the deal. We are thinking of doing a wrap around porch at some point, but we have contacted an architect um, because we know about this much about home renovation stuff. And I would really love for somebody, a professional, to look especially at the front of our home now that it's opened up and you can see it. Um, you can very much so tell where the addition in the 80s was added on. And there's some just uh, quirkiness, quirks, mm -hmm. 
about it. So I would love for an architect to take a look and tell us what we can do window wise because like the shutters on our house are way too small for the windows. Like that's obvious. They were here like that. Um, when we moved in, some of them are even overlapping because the windows are too close together. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's one of those things that I thought, you know what, before we go and like build onto this house, let's maybe fix some of these things. So <laughs> are you planning to build on? Do we need no, more the, space? No, the wraparound porch. Oh, gotcha. So I don't want to put that on and then decide like, oh, let's like mess with the siding and like redo where windows are or whatever. I don't know what the deal, like what the deal will be and what that person's suggestions will be for us. But I'm looking forward to hearing from somebody who that's... But to answer the question, do, will the height bother you of the windows? Oh. Is there something wrong with the height of the windows? Well, imagine if you add another foot to the, your, your floor level. I don't think it'll so. It'll make the windows a lot lower. That's true. But I hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> the lowest window is the one um, like by our TV room that doesn't have a uh, window box on it. It's like right on the other side of the sun porch. And I think we're thinking about taking those windows out and putting in a set of double doors mm -hmm. that comes out onto the patio so we can put our dining room back in there. I do wonder if it'll make the windows look weird, though. What? Adding on the Oops. porch. Well, that's something that the architect can tell us. And I'm sure that they can do like a rendering on like a digital... Like, let us see yeah, what maybe. different options would be. Um, I'm really looking forward to that because I don't really want to invest a lot in, in things like the porch or, you know, and do it wrong. So, yeah. Um, Shelly said, how come you don't use impatience, especially the double ones? I just planted the Rockapoco rose pink. I just planted some in our... Versailles window boxes last night. I did not film it, but we'll show you at some point. I've still got the boxwoods in there. I've got the pink Rockapoco Impatience, um, Dusty Miller, and Creeping Jenny. They're very full, and the Impatience don't have a lot of color yet, so I'm kind of waiting until I have color, and then I'll show you guys what they look like. Right now, it's kind of like green, <laughs> but it's very lush. Um, Jacqueline said, does your area get the 17-year cicada invasion? No, it does not. We don't have any cicadas here, do we? No, we uh, but not very far away. We have Mormon crickets. Oh, yeah. Those, those are, are creepy. Those are really big. Really big. So we went up to the hills one. Remember, Benjamin was like six months old or something, yeah. seven months old, and we went up to the hills, and it was an invasion of Mormon crickets. And they're like this big, and they eat their dead and maimed. I want to say so, they're a little bit bigger than cicadas. Are they? Um, I, they're like, like they're this big, like their cicadas. bodies are huge. Yeah. And so you drive up this road and it was like a plague. Like it mm -hmm. was gross. It was like the like whole... Like the road was red. The road was red and moving with these mm -hmm. things. And every time you, cause you crunch a whole bunch of them and then they would swarm on the ones that were injured and they would start eating them. It was so... I don't even know why we stayed and picnicked there because we like spread out our blankets and then we were just like... Uh, flicking these crickets off. I mean, they don't hurt you, but they're just disgusting. Oh, gross. Did you get any video from that? I don't. We'll have to like go back in yeah, our I'll have to archive go back and, look. and see. I'll bet I did. Yeah. Donna said, do you have someone who cleans your windows? Yes. <laughs> Always so clean. I get through cleaning our windows and then the sun hits them and they look awful. That's how it is with me too. Um, there was a few things that Aaron and I from kind of the gate decided what we would budget for and that was for somebody to help us clean because we've both always worked full-time and so you know something has to full-time plus overtime yeah because like we for did, a lot of years we were just constantly working well garden answer in the beginning we were working full-time jobs and then we were working garden answer pretty much full-time like yeah on the side i mean every evening and weekend and holiday everything was was to end lunch hours mm -hmm. remember i'd run home on a lunch hour and try to get all the photography done mm -hmm. and just like try oh i don't know what in the world we had some <laughs> sort of drive back then but um anyway we realized that some things had to give like if we were going to put so much time into this then we had to either budget uh for somebody to do this otherwise our windows would be disgusting anyway we get them cleaned quarterly um so for a while there it was cleaned like i'd have jeff come like twice a year or something and now he just has it on a schedule to come four times a year every season to give him a good once over he does a fantastic fantastic job and it's super reasonably priced and i just talked to him about the hartley oh did you yeah i was like jeff i think we're gonna have to have that clean not on the inside but like on the outside once a month maybe during the growing season. Well, that might be something that we can all do. Maybe between me and you and Paul. Yeah, that's true. It, we may Paul, not need you to tell have... him, like, hey, if I told him, can you clean the, win how, uh, the windows in the house? He'd have it done in, like, two like, hours. Yeah. The whole house. What's, and all the outbuildings, too. What's funny, though, about Paul is that sometimes you'll tell him to do something, and, like, 20 minutes later, you're like, 
he couldn't have gotten that done. Well, and you're like, why is he? But he does. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he gets like, it done. Like, why isn't Paul out there? Water in the high tunnel. Yeah. You know? And then he's but, like, oh, I already got it done. But you go check. And it's like, it's great. I know. Like, job all done. I know. I think he has magical powers we don't know yeah. about. <laughs> okay. Jessica said, isn't it always windy out in Eastern Oregon? Um, how will you pick a date to paint if it's always windy? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully next spring or this fall, if we do it this fall. I don't know. See, like going back to the whole house renovation thing, I don't really want to paint the house if we're going to like rip stuff up, you know? Right. So hopefully we get some answers quickly and we figure out what we want to do with this house. Um, it really is an interesting house. Um, <laughs> one day we will do a house tour inside. One day. I told Aaron I need to just like dedicate one day a month like to going shopping for the inside of our house. I just, I allot so much to the outside of our house that I, I just spend so little on the inside, just like arranging things. I remember, do you remember in our townhouse, Aaron, like I decorated to the nines for every single holiday. Yeah. And I would have like rotating uh, flower arrangements well, all the time. Oh, you had a lot more time back then. Yeah, I didn't have kids and I had um, a small house and my garden was pretty self sustaining. Once you have your garden really full, there's like no weeds to take care of. And the only thing I had to do was water. Um, yeah, so I had a lot of time to dedicate to that. It's something I do kind of miss. Um, but yeah, it, there's a lot to do in there. Uh, next video was five popular bulbs you can plant now for gorgeous summer colors. So I just thought it would be good. It's always good sometimes, especially because we are getting new people all the time so, um, watching our videos. And so we thought, you know, we should do a video kind of geared for beginners talking about some of those things that you can be planting now um, to get beautiful blooms because like, you know, some things are so popular like dahlias. And I know that there's people out there wondering like, how come I can't find dahlias? you know, at the store, how come I, you know, why am I not finding all these really incredible varieties? And it's because you don't typically buy them as plants, you buy them as tubers and grow them yourself. Um, so I thought going over some of those things and then showing visually how to do it, I went out to the garden and planted all the things I talked about might be helpful. So Jessica said, living in Missouri, AKA clay so soil insanity, I always find it crazy, crazy when Laura digs with her hands or even the auger. When I dig a hole, the entire thing comes out in one clump and you have to beat it apart to get the dirt to fill back in around the plant roots. The plus, we don't really need irrigation for a good portion of the growing season. Happy gardening, y'all, with um, all our various pros and cons. And isn't that the truth? Everybody has something, you know? Like I just talked about my parents' soil and how they've got like this pocket of wonderfulness up there. But then, um, you know, they have their, their struggles like with the rocks that we don't have. Um, yeah, everybody has their thing, yeah. Uh, Liz said, does anyone know if Laura has mentioned where she got the pot dolly? Well, we've had a couple different ones. Um, you can still buy the pot wheels ones. Yeah, but probably wouldn't recommend that. The one that we have now, I looked it up. Um, it. It's like a landscape dolly and it's not sold anymore. Are you serious? Yeah, it's it's like out of stock or unavailable. I went to the website and you can't get it anymore. It is so. But you know what? If you're favorite. looking for something, Google terms like um, landscape dolly. Uh, or landscape cart and that'll get you closer than um, just typing in like pot dolly pot dolly because yeah, there's so many out there I'm like probably I'm like not acclimated to the heat yet yeah. so I'm sorry if I'm like super shiny today um, yeah a lot of pot dollies are just kind of lame like yep. look at the weight limit also um, be prepared for kind of like a sticker shock a sticker shock yeah. yeah so you know what down at the garden center um, we use just like an in industrial kind of regular dolly that somebody uh, taped some foam insulate. Uh, and probably like welded sides too. Yeah, well they did it welded deck so uh, that we could do two trees at once instead mm. of just one. But um, what, what are those things? They look like pool noodles. You could use mm -hmm. a pool noodle, but like you put them around the pipes, those gray. Oh in yeah, like insulation foam. Insulation or, foam. Or you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. Um, and they just duct tape those so that it pad the dolly and that's what, you know. We've used it for years down there and it works great. Can you grow all of these in pots and instead of digging them up to store them, can you just bring the pots inside in a bit of a warmer place? Yeah, I think you could absolutely do that. 
Um, the thing you would have to make sure is one, that it is truly a warm enough place to not freeze those bulbs. Um, and then you'd have to be very careful with the watering. Um, because it's a situation where, like when you're storing even dahlia tubers, I lightly moistened our vermiculite, which was my storage medium, and um, even then some of my tubers dried out a little bit. Um, and the only ones that I lost, I didn't lose any to rot, I lost a few to desiccation. They just dried out a little bit too much, and it's because I wasn't really diligent either with checking on things because, you know, we had a baby in January and everything just kind of like whew, went out the window, priorities changed there. Um, so. You just have to be very careful not to overwater, but not to let those bulbs dry out 100% either. Debbie said, where do you buy cannas? You can usually, like my parents sell them at their garden center. I don't think they have any left right now, but typically you can get them in bags or like in a little box or something at a garden center. Um, and I'm sure you can order them as well. And I do see cannas potted sometimes. And that's like all of these things, sometimes I see them potted at garden centers, but by and large, it's if you wanna get the really cool varieties, you buy them as bulbs or tubers or rhizomes, corms. Yeah. Denise said, I'm concerned about not watering until there's above ground growth. So does that mean I shouldn't try them in the landscape here in Massachusetts? We could get a pop-up thunderstorm without much notice. I really appreciate how thorough you are with information. It gives us confidence to try things that are out of our comfort zone. Also, any info about rabbit resistance would be appreciated. Uh, I'm just not a super huge wealth of knowledge on rabbit resistance because it's not something I deal with. Does Erin? The Impatient Gardener has a YouTube channel. She has rabbits, isn't she, she deals with? Ask her. Well, <laughs> I mean, she probably has specific videos like with some recommendations, I'm yeah. guessing. I know she has like deer fencing around her vegetable area. I think that's what a lot of people do is they yeah. just build a, a Yeah, but if you can't like deer fence, fence. Every, everything in your entire yard, do you think? Do no, people do I that? don't think you can. But there are resistant varieties. So, um... And I wouldn't be too concerned about like if you get a random rainstorm for the dahlias. I think what it means is not to like deluge them with water like you would like with seeds when you're trying to get seeds to germinate, you constantly keep them wet. You can't let them dry out. It's different for dahlias. You um, like I uh, watered mine in that day because I wanted to make sure our powder dry soil was settled in around the tubers. It's just that you can't, you don't want to do too much. Like if it was rain day after day after day after day, I would maybe be a little bit nervous about that. but. A random rainstorm is not gonna hurt anything. Angela said, where do you purchase your bulbs and tubers? Um, a whole bunch of different places. So uh, my parents' garden center, Color Blends has been a super great resource, Florette Flower. Um, like all the anemones and ranunculus that I have, she sent out and they are absolutely phenomenal. She actually sent me a lot of uh, dahlia tubers last year too. Um, so many that I stored were from her. Eden Brothers, I've bought some from them and I've been really happy with the quality. I had like one maybe that was mislabeled last year, but the quality was great so I reordered from them. Um, I had a few from Brex and the dahlia tubers from them were really good. Uh, where else? Where else have I gotten dahlia tubers? I think that's maybe it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my so-called life, 1977's Budget Beauty and More, said, why don't you plant or talk about irises? They are one of my favorite flowers. And they are one of my faves too. They're so nostalgic, especially my sister and I were just talking about this. She was over yesterday and she was like running around with me on the gator while I was watering. And we were talking about irises and how they smell when the sun warms them up and how it just throws us right back to our childhood. My mom's cutting garden. Um, a lot of the irises were there when we moved in. And so it just became the cutting garden and she just kind of built on that. And now like it's, it's, we walked through it yesterday, last night. Remember, it's like, there's some big stuff in there yeah. to where it's like not very open anymore. It's very cozy in there and it used to be like all cut stuff. Sure. Anyway, things evolve. But anyway, the reason I haven't talked about it is because I haven't even, I've planted like maybe, maybe 10 iris in our garden since we moved in. There are huge patches here and around the garden that were here when we moved in. Thankfully, I planted a few that have like the white variegation in the leaves, but I don't think we did a video on it. It's coming at some point. We t tend to do videos as it comes up naturally in our garden. Very rarely do I do a video that's like some random subject that's not actually pertaining to what I'm doing in my own garden. But I do love them, they're awesome. And you know what, if you uh, aren't following Florette on Instagram, you should, because she's been posting a lot of iris pictures and I think they're expanding their iris production and it's just gorgeous. Makes me wanna grow more. 
Uh, Kira said, whatever happened to the gray cat that got into the sun room? Yeah, so like a couple weeks ago, I was walking through the house and I had to stop by this window right here because there was a cat sitting right on this chaise, just like random long haired, beautiful cat. And I think he or she is still coming around at night eating the yeah, cat food. Right. Because I leave cat, I leave food out for our cats because they're in and out. And um, so, yeah, I see that cat around, but never back up here in the sun porch. However, I do think it's not running when it sees me. Does it run when it sees you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I, like, I spent a long time the other night. <laughs> I could see it out the kitchen door, and I just stand there. And I just kind of, like, look at the cat and, like, don't make any sudden movements. And I just kind of let the animal get used to seeing me. And then I move slowly away. And so now it doesn't move. Like it, it will stay as long as I don't open the door. Yeah. But it can see me moving around and it doesn't spook it. Um, so maybe at some point we will become friends. I don't know. Next video is planting raspberries in our new raised beds. That was so fun. I love that area out there. I mean, it's so like exposed and stark still, but it's starting to like form and come together and it's just making me so happy. I'm so excited about it. So I just went through um, how we built the, we didn't build the beds, how we had the beds built. Eddie and Trisha built the beds who are like our go-to. He's actually Eddie's general, generaling. He's our general contractor for the Hartley. Um, and he does all kinds of beautiful projects. He built the fence in the back of the orchard. He's gonna build the shed in the orchard mm -hmm. here pretty quick. Yeah, so I went through how those were built and then I planted heritage raspberries. So I just kind of went through some raspberry um, tips. Uh, the Plantastic Nerd said, I just woke up, made a nice warm cup of coffee. It's sunny outside and I'm sitting on my balcony and there's a new video of my favorite gardening YouTube channel, Life is Good. Have a great weekend, everyone. Love from Germany. That's cool. Isn't it awesome how connected we can be to people so far away? I mean, we have just been able to meet so many cool people and like this community is so like, I don't know, it's, it's a really special thing. Michelle said, do you worry about, forget that I said worry about, I know you don't worry. <laughs> the water line. Wait, wait, before she asks, you could probably answer if I say no. No. Whatever, whatever, whatever the question is, no. No. Uh, do you worry about the water line under the path getting damaged from all the gator traffic back and forth without it being in conduit or other protective barrier? No. No. <laughs> that ground is fairly soft. Like, it's not gonna, and that, that tubing, I would be worried if it was PVC maybe, because PVC is more brittle. Like, it grows more yeah, brittle. Yeah, the tubing has some flex to it. Yeah. But, and you know what? If it got damaged, you just do it again. Just, yeah. It's like a 10 minute job to... Yeah to redo it right um dan said what type of lumber are you using you know what i uh did eddie text me back let me look hold on uh yes it's fur it was nothing special we did have to have it milled into a four by six size because nobody had any um we have a wood mill really nearby so it's something normal that they do it's not like something really special well they just have trees and he's he you said just they can cut them you however you want um so we had them cut into four by six pieces. We wanted that chunky look without being a railroad tie. Um, and he couldn't source any cedar or redwood. I can't imagine how much that would cost though. Like yeah. I was fine using just whatever out there. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> um, so he did do a protective coating though. I don't know what it was exactly. I'll have to ask him. But he did a seal on them to where water wouldn't like immediately start soaking in and wrecking the wood. But it wasn't like an expensive type of wood. Uh, Kalina said, I guess that's all relative right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think it's all expensive right now. Maybe we should have done gold. Maybe. Probably cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kalina said, these are beautiful. Question though, why wouldn't you typically go for bare root versus potted? Um, you know what? Bare root in the spring, I would go for that because one, they're way less money. They're way cheaper to go bare root. And if you get them at the right time early in the spring when bare root's available, they're typically dormant and they haven't started pushing growth yet. So if you can get them in the ground early, they're usually a little bit, like you don't have that transplant shock and they're a little bit tougher. Like right now with the wind we have, like the plants are gonna be tattered here really quick. I'm not, like they looked beautiful when we planted them and I knew that it quickly, they're not gonna look like that anymore <laughs> um, because that growth is not used to the kind of weather they're getting out there but all the new stuff that they produce will be acclimated to that out there tina said can you plant blackberries and raspberries together in the same bed any tips for companion plants for raspberries you know the only thing that i would caution you against of planting them together i mean I, I think they want the same things in terms of soil and water and all that sort of thing um but the size 
uh, blackberry plants get massive, raspberry plants sucker all over the place. So you just wanna make sure that you've given both of them enough room to kind of ramble around a little bit. And both of them need a little bit of a structure. They need like the um, horizontal wires that we have, the wire cables, those will hold all the canes up um, to where you can manage harvesting from them. So keep that in mind. Um, HM said, why don't you run sprinklers to control the dust? Well, if we ran sprinklers to control the dust, we would have a weed patch to beat the band out there. Uh, we will be here shortly. Actually, Chad was supposed to be here today, right? Yeah. He'll probably come tomorrow. Okay. So he's going to finish leveling out the front of this garden space, and it should take not very much time at all. Like, he'll be here for part of a day finishing that, and then Benny, um, who puts in our uh, sprinklers, is going to be here Wednesday. Tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? Yeah. Oh. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> probably Thursday or Friday. Probably Thursday Maybe or Friday. Maybe next Wednesday. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but the sprinkler system should be, like, it's imminent. And then as soon as that's in, we're going to seed. I don't even care how hot it is. Like, even if we did one zone at a time. I think that we should we should water first. You really want to do that with I, how that your patch over there is looking? It looks so good along the lane. Because we thought about irrigating, letting stuff come up, killing it with dead weed brew. And then watering again. Or even again, torching it. Or torching it. Then watering again, letting the next crop of weeds come up, and then torching. And then keep doing that so we can get rid of some of the weeds out there before we seed grass. Which might be the wisest thing to do. In which case, we will be watering and keeping the dust down a bit. Yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll I just am so desperate to see grass. I know. Me too. I really want to see it. It's funny. We are like... We are like... Um, I don't even know. It... Uh. Well, and then we can um, we can get the wire put in, and we can start having the robot mower mow it. Yeah, I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move the one from the backyard. Yeah, the that front yard. just much smaller space. And I might buy another one eventually for the backyard, um, but I'm gonna wait for a little while because you're gonna end up tearing yeah. up a bunch of grass. I don't think it'll even be necessary. But we did pull out two chairs up here to the front sidewalk, and we just sit in the evenings. Like Benjamin loves to play in the dirt. He's got a bunch of trucks out there, and Samantha sleeps in her stroller, and then we just sit in the chairs and look out at a dirt patch. <laughs> it's quite fun, actually. Well, you just imagine it green. Yeah. Um, next video was, and this is the last video, I think. Uh, yeah, you didn't get questions from the antiquing day. No, because that's next week. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm all off from having Monday be yeah, a holiday. because today is Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Keep forgetting that. Um, filling up large space with annuals for big color. So in that video, we went down to the college and filled up the area around the fountain, which there are eight huge beds, some of which have a lot of plantings in them currently, uh, and some didn't have very many, like a lot of the, I think six out of the eight triangles had big trees in them, and then two didn't have any trees. So they're all a little bit different, but I used all the same plants. So it was a mixture of some credible sunflowers, uh, toucan coral cannas, plain the blue salvia, heated up yellow gallardia, Supertunia, Vista, Bubblegum, Silverberry, Fuchsia, um, a Sweetheart Lime, Ipomia, and then I used a few Vertigo Penicetums. Yeah. Is that it? Yes. I think that sounds about right. Anyway, so every triangle, even though they're designed a little bit differently, will have a very cohesive feel because all the colors will be the same. Um, cockatiel, I forgot to get a, um, these are the, this is the only video I grab questions from. I forgot to grab a top comment, so oh. we'll just skip that. Cockatiel Nation said, do they have adequate irrigation in those beds and will they mulch? Right now, no. They do not have adequate irrigation. Are they watering those? Did yeah, you tell? by hand for okay. right now. Until Benny gets out there to do the water. Poor Benny. He's like all over the land trying to get everybody's drip set up. And here yeah. it is like this week going to be 104. So, whoa, look at that big bee, Aaron. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Like a hornet. Gah. Oh, okay. It flew out. We're good. Anyway, so no. Right now, the irrigation in those beds is not adequate. There is drip in there, though. My hair is starting, gonna start to curl with a, due to all the sweat. Yeah. Um, but Benny will get the drip run and after that, they will mulch those beds. Jordan said, okay, Laura, I have to ask because this question has been driving you nuts since I've started watching your videos forever ago. Why the pronunciation of foliage without the I, foliage versus foliage? I started watching your videos and thought, oh my gosh, I've been saying it all wrong all these years. Then Googled the pronunciation and all the online examples say foliage with the I sound. Um, there was even a video where you said it with the I sound and then laughed at yourself as if it was obviously wrong and then corrected your pronunci pronunciation back to foliage. <laughs> so I need to know, is there something I'm missing? I don't want to seem ridiculous talking to another gardener saying it wrong. <laughs> I you think can, you can say it however you want. Yeah. And if you want to be cool, you could say foliage. <laughs> <laughs> but you will be 
wrong. It is foliage. Our region says foliage. Um, and I've heard a lot of other online uh, gardening content creators say foliage. So I feel like these are my people. Yeah, you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah. Um, saying foliage to me is like saying arbovitae or poinsettia. We just, we have different regional sayings um, and foliage is one of ours that we just say improperly. Yeah. Kind of like these Which ones. means that for us, it's proper. Right. It's just like what we hear and people would look at us weird. Like I even say peony now. Like that's the one I've crossed over and mm -hmm. I say peony. My mom still says peony. Um, and so we'll be in the same conversation saying it our own ways. Uh, but that took me a while. Yeah. Like it felt foreign to say it that way and I felt a little silly even saying it properly. Anyway. So it is foliage, Jordan. Are you going to switch to clematis? No. <laughs> Deborah said, I always wonder, do people know you as Laura from Garden Answer in your hometown? We keep a pretty low profile around here. I think yeah. there are a lot of people who do watch our videos from around here, but we don't like, like when we're at the college, um, my brother was actually, he teaches at the college and he was like, I saw you guys out there planting while I was teaching the other day. And it just like super surprising to me that they're not out there like getting pictures and like wanting to, you know, and I just, I don't like to do that. I like to keep a very low profile and I like to just get the work done. You know, like yeah. I'm not in it for the fanfare, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Um, well, a lot of other I'm people have different mindsets. It. Like, you know, I could see how someone else might be like, yeah, we can go plant flowers. We'll have a booth and we'll, you know, we'll get our sponsors involved and we'll, you know, do some of this. I'm not and a networker. No, it's just like, no, we'll just go and plant and, mm -hmm. and leave and, mm -hmm. and it'll be pretty. Yeah. You guys might not uh, believe it, but I am actually very introverted. I'm a, like a huge introvert. Um, and like doing social things sometimes like like fills me up i always love doing meet and greets that part of um like going to the flower shows and stuff i do miss mm -hmm. because i felt like i got to meet so many of you guys that i just get to see online you know um but a lot of it it wears me out like i have to be like in my garden <laughs> i have to be in my garden at home to recharge like somewhere quiet um so yeah i err on the introverted side um, Linda said, why were you deleted from comments on you can't eat the grass? So there are scammer pages that are pretending to be us that are trying to scam people. And it's happening not just to us. So it's not like somebody's specifically targeting Garden Answer, but they're specifically targeting Garden Answer and a whole bunch of other people too. They're doing, doing it to other people. In, in the comment section, it probably looked like Garden Answer's comment has been deleted. Garden Answer's comment. And really the comment was probably like, buy Bitcoin, use my link yeah. or whatever. Or you won $1,000. Like yeah. contact us with your credit card information. Right. Something stupid. Don't give your credit card information to anybody. Ah. So that, that's been happening. Um, anyway, Aaron was watching that live. So did you see it, happen it happening? No, I didn't see it happen. Um, I got several messages from people about it. Mm -hmm. And then, so I logged on quick and the live stream was still going. Was and I, I watched the rest of the live stream. Mm -hmm. uh, Glenda said, why do people pronounce penstemon penicetum? Should it be penstemon? Only if you're referring to penstemon. <laughs> There are two different types of plants. There is the penstemon, which is a penstemon. It is a perennial plant that has flowers. And then there's penicetum, which is an ornamental grass. Different plant categories look completely different. But they have very similar names, so I can see where the confusion comes in there. As Stephen says, at the end, we hear water, maybe a fountain. So let me tell you about this fountain. We went down, we planted up the beds. And then it was late. Aaron actually, Aaron and Paul came home because Paul had worked over like an, over, an hour of overtime. And um, anyway, so they came home and I stayed and had to water in, like f finish planting a little bit and water in the last couple of beds. And so it was like 5.30 or something. And I was like dirty and tired. And I just came home. We decided to go back the next day to kind of finish up the video and give you a tour. And Aaron and Benjamin came with me. And so Benjamin and Aaron are like by the fountain messing around. And I'm like just chatting at you guys and holding the camera up. And um, I hear this ruckus behind me. <laughs> I turn around to see Benjamin, who had just fallen in the fountain, like this far, like chest deep into the fountain. And he was standing outside of it. Like you had gotten him out <laughs> yeah. by the time that I realized what was going on. And he was standing there like all upset. Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened is there's like this two foot ledge all the way around this fountain and you're sitting on it. Mm -hmm. And Benjamin had just been kind of complaining about how bright it was. So Aaron's like, I'm going to order you some sunglasses right now when I'm thinking mm -hmm. about it. Um, so he got on Amazon, was ordering him some glasses and Benjamin was kind of like walking by and tried to walk behind Aaron and slipped in the fountain. <laughs> what a like chaos Well, it makes scene. me look like a total loser like sitting on my phone. But... 
But you were actually trying to attend to some trying, of his needs. Yeah, because I knew that if I didn't order the sunglasses at that very moment, I would totally forget. Yeah. He was playing. What happened is he was playing with one of those little roly polies. Mm -hmm. um, it was crawling, and I was like, "Hey, Benjamin, if you touch it, it'll turn into a ball." And so he did. He just barely tapped it, and it went into. And then um, he thought that was the coolest thing, and then he accidentally bumped it into the water. <laughs> So oh, poor thing. Well, I think they survive. They float, don't they? Uh, well, where would it float to? Well, uh, well, it probably could climb up the edge. Either way, so he was trying to get you know get close to it and look at it, and he was squinting. It was just a, just a big. We had big to cut chaos. The, We had to cut that part of the video because I'm not gonna lie. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Why is my yeah. son in the fountain? Like were... I was kind of mad about it. Yeah. Because. Because I'll, I kind of, yeah. I'm like, what were you doing? Were you on your phone? <laughs> anyway, couldn't leave that in the video. See, it's not always perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's true. What you see is a heavily edited version of what we're doing in life. So never like compare yourself to what we're doing in life because we're all the same, all of us. Uh, Nancy said, will my super tunias bounce back after being shredded after a hailstorm? I... Nancy, I feel your pain. Is there any trimming back I should do to the spent and shredded blooms? Um, yeah, you can do some trimming. Super Tunias are great about being trimmed. They usually flush back really beautifully. Um, was it two years ago? We had a garden tour here, like second week of June, second weekend in June or first weekend in June, and we had a hailstorm that came through two weeks beforehand, and I cried. Aaron had to leave the house with Benjamin because I was just like, I didn't know what to do. I was distraught because it shredded our, our hostas and it shredded everything. And everything was looking so good. And that day, remember, I was telling you, like, I feel good about how everything's looking. Yeah. I feel like we're buttoning up the weed issues. We're buttoning up all these projects. We're gonna be ready. And then that hailstorm came through and, oh boy, that was bad. So I totally feel your pain, um, but the super tunias should be fine. The only thing I lost out of that whole storm was one hosta got so severely shredded, I cut it all the way back. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, it must just have been, like it couldn't handle its life anymore, but it just didn't come back. But out of all the hostas that were shredded, that's pretty good. Yeah. And last comment uh, was from Katie. That's lo uh, looking amazing and will fill in great. Will those cannas be too hard to deadhead, the ones that are planted three plants deep from, uh, three plants deep from the edge. I know that dimensions can sometimes look so different on the camera. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I read your comment, Katie. I'm like, oh, well, I think it'll be all right. I mean, I did not plant very thick um, in there. And I think even though those plants will spread out and, and such, I don't think it'll be complete coverage in any of the beds because they really wanted them to be like, I feel like I overdid based on what they requested. Like mm -hmm. they wanted things to be fairly simple, um, low maintenance. Uh, and that's why I thought, well, cannas are the only thing I'm putting in anywhere that need to be deadheaded. Um, and so, yeah, like I didn't feel it like a normal commercial landscape would go about it. Yeah. So I think they'll be okay. But there's been cannas in there before. Has there? Yeah. Like two years ago, I think. I don't remember that. I wanted to say there was some like orange cannas. Is that a thing? Well, probably. Well, yeah, there's orange blooms for sure. Yeah. That's probably going oh, for the school colors. Oh, we should put some, uh, some orange um, py pyro, what are those called? Oh, the nephophia. Nephophia. Those are nice, but they bloom like twice and then they lull between. That's true. But they're still nice. They're cool when they bloom. Yeah, they really are. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I am going to attempt to go plant some flower seeds outside this evening. I'm thinking like, let's get them in the ground before these 100 degree days and they will pop through that soil so fast. Yeah. It'll be rather, like a greenhouse outside. It, yeah, it kind of feels like feels like that in this room right yeah. now. Ne next week, we're going to point a fan right at my face. Okay. Or we should maybe use the studio because that's what it's for. That's a good it's idea. just like, it's so nice to use natural light. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a great start to your week and we will see you in the next one.